welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey here at the helm as we work on a brand new afghan together and this is the octagon and squares afghan available by redheart.com. So why did I choose this particular project? The simplicity and the fact that viewers can grow the afghan to whatever they need. This afghan is five octagons wide by four octagons in the one direction. So it's a relatively nice easy throw for the couch. But if you want to make a bedspread, obviously you just have to add more octagons going in both directions. And in fact my friend Colleen, she's making hers that it is five octagons wide by seven deep and then she's making it for a double bedspread for herself. So it's one of those that you can add and subtract the amount of octagons and squares in order to change the size of this afghan. The amount of yarn that you need for this, this is Red Heart with Love but you can obviously use Super Saver yarn if you choose to do so. There's only four different colors and when you look at the color schemes you will notice that yellow exists in every one, then the teal blue and then the burgundy and the brown are being mixed on and off depending on which one you're doing. But don't limit yourself to just four colors. If you have other yarn that you want to play with and really create an abstract looking afghan, you're more than welcome to do so as long as you have the right amount of octagons and squares in order to put it together at the end. So you're the crocheter, so the creativity is simply up to you. So here's how this is going to work. We have three videos. This is video number one and in video number one I'm going to be showing you how to do the octagon shapes. A lot of people are confused on the bobbles that you are doing within these afghans. So I'm going to be showing you obviously step by step in order to how to complete the octagon. So that would be video number one. In video number two we're going to cover doing the squares. The squares are relatively simple and easy to follow along so you can do that as well. And then on video three I'm going to show you how I assembled it but of course if you have have your own methods on the way that you prefer to assemble your afghans, you're more than welcome to do so. So there will be one, two and three and this is video one and let's get started on making your octagons now. So now let's get started on this tutorial. If you're looking for this pattern you can find it on redheart.com and you can just uh, go to the more information of this video and there will be a direct link to take you right directly there. We're going to be working on the octagons within this video and I'm using a size J or a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook for today's tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be using the Red Heart with Love and that's what it's calling for in the pattern but feel free to substitute it with Red Heart Super Saver or equivalent yarn in order to make this afghan. So now let's get started on this tutorial. To begin we're going to be starting on the inside of this motif and working our way out and you will notice that there's a color change every time we do a step and when we get to the outside area here you will notice that it's very very simple. Very easy. These are called bobbles and we're going to be showing you how to do that. There's what it's called as a beginning bobble and a regular bobble throughout this pattern and we're going to review that as well to make it easier for you to follow along. So let's uh, grab our yarn up and I'm going to start off with yellow and we'll get going on that right now. To begin we're going to create a slip knot and if you know how to do one already just create it and just wrap it around your finger twice if you don't know how. Take the back over the front and just hold it and now take the new back and up and over and there is your slip knot and just slip in your hook and just pull it snug not completely tight. So we have a chaining of five to begin with so let's begin to do that. So we just ro rotate back and grab it. So one, two, three, four, and five and simply just want to form a ring. So we're just going to slam the hook into the very first chain just like so. Grab the yarn and pull it through and through and you will uh, have a ring just like this. So this is the straggler and we want to lay that on top of the line so when we're going around it in the next revolution that we're going to trap that underneath so you don't see any stragglers hanging off your work. So we're going to start off and it says to do a beginning bobble in the ring. So you have to look in the instructions for special abbreviations and it says beginning bobble says chain three which counts as a double crochet work two double crochets in the indicated stitch leaving the last loop of the each stitch on the hook yarn over and draw through all loops on the hook. So that's a beginning bobble. So let me simplify that for you. It's indicating to you you got a chain three. So every time it's saying a beginning bobble this is what it means. So we're going to chain three one two and three and simply we are going to uh, that counts as a double crochet and it says work two double crochets leaving the last loop of each stitch on the hook. So let's uh, just wrap our material going into the center pulling it through. So normally you would pull through two and then two to finish off your double crochet but in this case we're just going to grab the yarn and pull it through two only and hold it. So we're going to 
let's do another double crochet. So wrap going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. So it's asking you to leave the last loops of each of the stitches on. So you have a total of three and so now it's saying to yarn over and draw through all loops on the hook and that is your beginning bobble. So the bobbles are all joined at the top just like so. So now when we go back to the directions it says round one beginning bobble in the ring which we've done and now it says chain two and bobble in the ring. So chain two, one and two and so a regular bobble is work three double crochets indicated leaving the last loop on each one and then yarn over and draw through all four loops on the hook. So let's begin. So we're gonna wrap going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Okay so we wanna gather these last loops that are coming up and we wanna do that for a total of three times. So pull through two and hold. Wrap going in, pull through, and pull through two and hold and so now you have four loops on your hook just like so. Yarn over and draw through all four and so after you've done a bobble just like so we want to uh, chain two, one and two and do another bobble just like we did. So wrap going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. You end up with four on your hook just like so and we're just gonna pull through all four and then chain two again. So one and two. So the one and two is kind of working its way all the way around and so basically it's saying to do this seven times. So the beginning bobble is right here and then we have one and two and so with a total of seven times with the beginning bobble you will end up with eight groups of these bobbles working, ar working around. So continue to do that just making your bobbles I'm just gonna speed up. So you just do your bobbles all the way around and then every time you do a bobble, chain two. So what I want you to do is just continue to go all the way around until you have eight groups of bobbles which includes your beginning bobble and we're gonna finish off this color and start your next one for the next round of this particular uh, motif. So I've just finished doing eight bobbles and just make sure that at the end you don't forget that you're gonna chain two before um, slip stitching it to the beginning chain that you started off with and you're gonna pull through and through and this is the final of this color. So these three belong together. They don't look like they're part of each other but they will slide and uh, we just wanna finish off this color so we're just gonna snippy snip and I just wanna kinda just pull it up and kinda just tie it so it's just wrapped around kind of just gently as we just weave it through. So it's better to weave in all of your um, edges as you go along because the next round what we're gonna do is that we're gonna trap these in a position so that they'll never be seen when you're finished your afghan. So let's uh, begin your next color and I think I'm just gonna go for pink. Why not, right? I'm now gonna grab the pink and I'm just gonna form a slip knot. I like my stitches to be a little bit stronger than normal people and basically you could fasten it on so it doesn't have that slip knot but I really like the extra security involved in doing so. So that's a personal choice for me. So I want you to slip in your hook in between any of the bobbles. So where you've done the chain two you can see that the bobbles are all grouped together and I just want you to slip in the hook in between two. Doesn't matter which one it is and just grab the, the yarn and just pull it through like that. And what I need you to do is that we're gonna do a beginning bobble again and in the beginning bobble we are gonna be doing a chain three just like we did before. So let's begin. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. So we chained up three and this is a straggler and I wanna trap that in a position so it's stuck underneath. So we're gonna do a beginning bobble so we're gonna wrap going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap in, pull through, pull through two and hold. You have now three on your crochet hook. We're just gonna wrap the yarn and just pull it through all of them. So we have that pull through and then what we're gonna just do is chain two, one and two and in the same gap space that you just did you gotta do a regular bobble. So let's do a regular. So we're just gonna wrap going into the same space, pull through two and hold, wrap in, pull through two and hold and wrap in in pull through, pull through two and hold and you will end up with four loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through all of the four just like so. So it says that, that we're gonna chain two, bobble, chain two, bobble into the next chain space. So let's uh, begin. So we're gonna chain two, one and two 
and then we're gonna just do another bobbling space just in the next. So we're just gonna go in, pull, and we're gonna start our bobble. So just a bobble is normal. So it's kind of a fancy word. It doesn't really, it means a lot, but it's, you know, it's not too technical. And we're gonna pull through. And now what we're gonna just do is chain two, one and two, and into the same space, we are gonna put another bobble in just like so. Okay, so we got another bobble there. We're gonna pull through all four and now chain two, one and two. And again, we move to the next space here and we put two more bobbles just like so into there. And we wanna do this into every space so that every space has two bobbles working its way out, working its way through, and then there's obviously a chain two in between each of the bobbles uh, in each space as well. And this is allowing the material to turn uh, and grow perfectly so it stays lying flat when you're done. So continue to do that all the way around and we're gonna fasten off this color when we get back to the start, just like there. We're getting all the way back around and I just wanna finalize the last bobble. So how many bobbles should you end up with? You should end up with a total of 16 in this time going all the way around. And if you look at this part right in the center here, there should be eight points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that uh, is a good indication. And once you're done your final bobble, be sure to chain two and then slip stitch it to the very top of this bobble. You have to go right here. Okay, this is where everything is joined together in this bobble. If you go any further back, it's just gonna make it look like it's standing apart from the rest. So we're just gonna do a slip stitch so that everything is joined and we just wanna trim this material and again, weave in the ends because we're ready to move on. And you can see that we still have a round shape going on even though we are working in the octagon motif at this time, but it's now gonna start taking the shape of the octagon in the next round. So grab your next color that you most prefer and let's get started. Now this yellow has been trapped into position so I can safely now go back and just simply trim that out and so voila I'm just trimming as I'm going to make it a lot easier so when I go to assemble that I don't have a lot of strings to work with when I'm finishing off this afghan. So I want to direct your attention now as we move along. We're about to start the burgundy area here and you will notice that each one of these squares and the corners have only two double crochets in here and then basically there's going to be one double crochet here in the middle and then back to two and, and going all the way around. So I really want you to pay attention to this because this is not like a traditional granny square where you have the three, two, three, three double crochets, three chain, three double crochets in the end. We have only two as we're working all the way around. So that's just one of those little tips that we can get started. So let's grab our next color and in my case I'm gonna do blue and as we go I'm just gonna create a slip knot like I did before and again the way that you fasten on is up to you. So where we need to grab on, we're gonna be starting off on a corner and when you start off on a corner, do you see how underneath that these two are working together in one? When we go to join, I want you to grab it in between two bobbles but not in between ones that are just working together as a group. So don't ever go in here or here. Choose one that's right in between. So just look up this yellow and just kind of follow it up and you can see that this is where exactly where you need to go. So don't pick anything, so don't pick here and don't pick here, but just follow the yellow up and you will see that's exactly where you need to go, just like there. So let's uh, begin this step next. So picking off where I left off, we're just gonna simply just, we're gonna join it here and we are gonna do a chaining three. So let's just join everything together and just like there. So we're right in between, so following the yellow going straight up, we wanna chain three, so one, two and three and this counts as one of the double crochets that are in the corner of your octagon shape. We want to now double crochet so grabbing the yarn and with the straggler just leave it down on top of the line so you can trap it into position so you can safely cut that later. So we're now going to immediately, so we did a double crochet, the chaining counts as one so there is your first corner and when we get back all the way around we're going to finalize off this corner on the other side. We're simply now gonna do one double crochet into the next chain two space. So just simply jumping over this bobble here and we're simply just gonna go right in between and we're gonna do another double crochet. And do you see how I just left the straggler on top so that I can trap it into position uh, and work our way along. So we're now gonna work on the next corner. So the next corner is always gonna be two double crochets, chain two, two double crochet. So here we go. 
So we're just, I'm gonna put the straggler behind. So we're just gonna do two double crochets. Chaining of two, one and two, going into the very same space because we're gonna turn a corner and we are gonna do another two double crochets. So there is corner one. So this is one out of eight sides that you will have. You immediately are now gonna jump to the next chain or gap space in between. This is the chain two gap and we're just gonna double crochet. So this is kind of like the runway in between the corners and now we're gonna do the next corner just like so. So let's begin to do that as well. So chain our two double crochet, two chain, two double crochet right into the next corner. And you can see that the octagon shape is now starting to take effect. So just like we did here, the next one here is gonna be one double crochet. And we're immediately gonna jump now and do another corner. So I want you to do that all the way around. So we're gonna do a corner and then you're gonna do one double crochet lonely by itself and then you're gonna immediately do the next corner and we're gonna work our way around doing the same procedure all the way around as per the instructions. And so then we're in the runway again. So it's just one lonely little double crochet. And then again, we're into the next corner. So do that and uh, we're gonna find a lot, we're gonna keep this color going actually. This is one of the main colors that you will see throughout your afghan. And so we're gonna keep this color going as we work through the rows of the particular octagon shape. I'm now coming all the way back around and I just have my lonely little one right in the middle, the runway, and now I just wanna finalize. This was the beginning of the first corner, so now we're just gonna put in our two double crochets into the same spot to finalize the corner off. I wanna chain two, just like we did before on any corner, and then I just wanna slip stitch it to the beginning of the chain three that we started off with and voila you now have your finalized. So you can actually see the eight sides have now taken shape and we're now ready to move on to the next row. Bringing your attention now back to the afghan we now have this round done here as you can see you had the corner piece you had your lonely and right here. So now we're going to move up and you will notice that from now on in this particular burgundy section is that you're going to have only one double crochet going in on the edge and then each one of the ones in there in the middle there are just a single double crochet into each stitch until you get to another corner. So it's actually very easy. So one, two, three, and four, the next four rounds are gonna be very easy because every time we go around, we're gonna simply growing this afghan a bit bigger by adding an extra couple stitches into each corner and it can make it really indefinite. You could actually do an entire afghan in a complete octagon shape just like you see here just by continuing to grow around and around and around. So we're now ready to move up and here's my little tip. It does not say this in the instructions so this is just my little tip to you. What I strongly recommend is that you need to make sure that you're working on a corner when you go to start and the way that I do it is that I slam in my hook into the corner piece and I grab the yarn and I pull it through and what's gonna happen now is that I've kind of slip stitched and it's kind of come backward a little bit. So you notice how it's more back into the hole and that's just my way of making sure that this next stitch stays in the corner instead of just on top of the first chain just like so. So now I'm gonna begin to chain three. So one, two, and three. And so you can see that that's now in the corner. And so for the next five double crochets, so one, two, three, four, and five, I want to put a double crochet right above it. So we're just going to just do a double crochet for five. So one into each one as you go all the way around. So you can either count it or look at it and you know you're going to get experience and after you do a couple you're going to realize you don't really need to count. You just got to look for it. Okay, so you got to make sure you got five in there. So one, so this is the first one. That was your corner. So one, two, three, four, and five. We're now ready for the corner. And on the corner, all you have to just do is one double crochet in to the corner piece itself, chain one, and double crochet into the corner again. And every time you do that, you're growing your afghan bigger. So now for the next five double crochets, you again put one double crochet right above it. And you want to do this all the way around. This is round number four as you work your way around. And uh, essentially what you're doing that every side because of the way that you're doing the corner, you're growing your afghan by a multiple of two. 
just so you're aware of that. And so now I have in my five, you can count it if you're unsure. And again, the corner gets one double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet. And I want you to do that all the way around when we meet back up and we'll move on to round number five. We're now coming all the way back around and we want to finish off with our five double crochets right in the middle. And again, I'm just taking a quick look. And then when we started, we had the one single crochet, single double crochet right in the corner. So when we finish off this corner, it's one double crochet, chain one, and then we're just gonna slip stitch it to the top of the chain three that you started off with just like so. So that will complete round number four. And you can see that your octagon shape is really starting to take effect. And actually I really like this color mix. I wish I would have done the regular afghan in this color now that I think about it. So let's move along to row number or round number five. In round number five, we're just gonna simply grow with already what we have. And again, what I just do, this is my tip, ram the hook into the corner slot and grab the yarn and pull through and through and it's like a slip stitch and it will pull it through and kind of just backwards and making sure that you're right in the corner of the stitch. So now we want to chain three, one, two and three. And now when we had groups of five last time, now that you've grown a little bit bigger and you've grown it by two because the corners count, you now have seven double crochets in a row before getting to the next corner. So you can either count that out if you wish. So let's, uh, I'm going to count that out with the, with the heck. So one and then two and then three and then four and we're just doing double crochets, five, six, and seven. So you've done your seven, and so you're immediately in the next corner. So the next corner is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet as normal. So this time when we're going all the way around, each side is now gonna have seven do uh, double crochets as you work around round number five. So continue to do that. We'll meet back up and we'll move on to round number six. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just finalizing my last corner and then just like before, it's one double crochet in, chain one, and then slip stitch it to the beginning of the chain three, the top of the beginning of the chain three, and voila, you now have another round just like so. So let's uh, begin to go on to round number six, and again, ramming my hook into the corner slot, grabbing the yarn, pulling it through, this is just my personal technique. I just think it really works well. And we want to begin to do the next round. So one, two, and three. So here's the thing. So when we looked at it before, last time we had five, and then we had six, and now we have nine stitches underneath in order for us to complete, in order to get all the way around. So this time when we go across, we're gonna just do a total of nine stitches going across the, the one side, just like you see. So one, so two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, and one more for nine, and then we're on a corner. So in the corner again, just like before, one double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet. Now I'm counting for the sake of the tutorial, but uh, when you begin used to this, you don't really need to count those out. You can simply see your stitch work. So you just have to just continue to go around. You can watch TV and kind of have a mindless project at the same time. So continue to go around. Each side is getting nine. Corners are one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. We'll meet back up and we'll move along to your next round on this project, which is round number seven. So continuing along with our project, we're finishing up round number six. And in round number six, we had a total of nine double crochets going across. And then the final corner, we have one double crochet, chain one, and just slip stitch it to the beginning of the chain three. So let's begin and we're gonna do round number seven. So we're just gonna do that slip stitching technique as I did before, just to kind of backward it up. And then one, two and three. So chaining three. So we started off with five and then we went to seven, then we went to nine, and then we went to eleven. So the denomination basically is that we have groups of two growing up every time. So in round number seven there's going to be a total of eleven double crochets now going all the way across the top just like you see. So let's uh, begin. We're going to do our first one. So 
this is the last time we're gonna be doing double crochets around this motif. We got only one more round to go after we're done this one and this finalizes the motif and all you just need to do is do 19 more of these. Now if you're looking for a tip what I strongly recommend is that in order to speed yourself up you don't wanna keep looking at your directions all the time so I recommend doing all the circles first and then come back and do the next color first and next and then come and do all the, the blue on every single one of the motifs as you go along and it makes it look like an assembly line but most of the crocheters that are completing this afghan are working working themselves in sequence like that in order for them to reduce themselves to have to look at the directions all the time. So that's just a quick little tip. So I'm now in the next corner and I have 11 going across and we're just gonna chain or double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same spot and then we're just gonna simply turn and just continue to go all the way around. So continue to go all the way around. We're gonna be back up. We're gonna fasten off this color and then we're gonna put on a trim and I'm gonna do the pink because I think it looks kinda sharp with the blue. So let's do that next. It is now time to finish off this round and again just like we did before, we're just working our way along and then on the final corner, we're gonna do one double crochet and chain one and we are just going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and we're going to slip stitch it and we're going to take this color off now so we're just going to snip it and I just want to just pull it out and I just want to weave this into the edge just like so. So we're going to move on to round number eight next and in round number eight we are going to do a single crochet around it. So the color choice when you're going all the way around, this will be the color that is joining everything together. So what I did for my afghan and what the artist did in this pattern is that the final color of this motif and the final color of the squares equal each other. So when you go to sew them together, you will not see any sew strings. So that's a choice that's up to you. You can still get away with it uh, if you don't want to match your colors like that. You just gotta be a little more careful when you're doing the sewing together part. So let's uh, grab on our pink and we're just gonna Join it and at any point within the corner just like so. Let's do that next. So I'm just going to create a slip knot just like I did before and again this is just my extra security. You do not have to do it this way and I'm going to put my crochet hook right into a corner piece and I'm going to grab the straggler and the yarn and just kind of pull it through the hole just like this and I'm just going to simply chain one. So this begins in the corner and when we come back all the way around we're going to be uh, fastening off at this section just like so. so. So remember how we did it before is in the very beginning we had 5 and 7, 9, 11 and now we have 13. So you can either count it or just go around as, as you wish. So now you're just going to start off and you're just going to single crochet into every stitch going all the way around. And in the corner we're simply just going to do one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into each corner piece instead. And I put down the straggler on top of the line Okay, so we're just gone on top so it's trapping it into position and essentially this is the final revolution of this particular motif. So I'm just gonna go around. I'm just gonna go along the one section here before I get to a corner to show you what to do and there will be a total of 13 double crochets working across before you get to the corner. So it's like so. And the corner is next. So we go one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet right into the same corner. And I want you to do that all the way around. So one single crochet into each corner, one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into the corner and continue to do that all the way around. When you came on all the way around, we're just about to finish off and remember how I weaved in the blue here. Because I've gone over top it with the pink, I can safely cut that now because it'll, it's buried underneath the stitches just like you see here. So let's uh, begin and we are just finalizing off this round and we're coming to the final corner and again one single crochet and the other side has already been done because that's where we started. We're going to chain one and we're just going to slip stitch it to the very beginning chain just like so and this concludes doing the octagon motif. We're just going to trim off the ends and we're just going to safely weave these in because when we go to do the sewing afterward when we go to sew this in a position we're going to trap these strings in a position uh, between the sew marks just like so 
And so I'm just kind of just gently just weaving it in and when I go back in afterward it'll fasten it in as I do the sewing procedures. So this concludes doing your round uh, octagon motif just like so. And really kind of fun bubble gum colors just like so. So to begin the next process you're going to want to do the squares and you're going to want to move on to video number two next. Well there you have it, that was how to complete your octagon. So move along to video number two as we work along and make ourselves some squares in order to continue this afghan along in its process. Until next time, we'll see you on video number two. And welcome back to RedHeart.com. I'm your host Mikey here from the Crochet Crowd. This is video number two as we work along our afghan throw just like you see here. In today's video we're working on the squares that are assembling the octagons together. In today's video I'm going to show you step by step on how to make these squares and then in video number three which is next we're going to be putting everything together and finalizing your afghan. So now let's get started working on your squares right now. And here we are in video number two and we're about to start the squares. If you would like the pattern for this information you can find it on the more information link of this video and I will direct you to where you can find this. And we're working on motif number two and in motif number two there's 12 of these little squares and you can mix and match and you'll see that there's different colors of the squares and again the creativity is up to you. Throughout this tutorial we're going to be using Red Heart with Love. Don't be afraid to substitute it with Red Heart Super Saver or whatever you have in stock. I'm using a size J or a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook today. So let's begin. We're going to be looking at this afghan from a point of matching. We've already finished video number one which is the octagon itself. So in this next one we have four different layers. So we have four different rows growing up and what I want to do, my goal is to finish off the round. So when we go to finish this off is that the outside color matches the octagon shape. So so that when we go to put it together it looks like it's blending together just perfectly. To keep my afghan looking consistent I'm going to start off the same kind of way and what I need to do is that I want to make sure that the final ends up in the pink and what I noticed that with myself is that the final two rows there's only four rounds going all the way around and what I want to do is the final two rounds I want it to be pink. So I'm going to change the middle to be yellow just like this one and then I'm going to go blue and then I'm going to go two layers of pink in order to match it with this particular sample that I'm showing on screen. So let's begin. We're going to do a slip knot just like we did on video number one. And the very beginning of this, the first uh, few revolutions are exactly identical as when you're working on the same pattern. So these are the squares, but we're going to start off in the same manner. So let's uh, begin. This does not count as one. We want a total of chaining of five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And we want to create a ring. So we're going to go to the, the beginning, chain, and pull the yarn through and through to form the center ring. And the straggler I just want to leave down on the top so I can trap it in a position for next time. So let's uh, be continue on with round number one and that was chaining a five doing a slip stitch and now we're going to do a beginning bobble in the ring. And you will notice in the more information of this uh, pattern you will see that there's a beginning bobble and a regular bobble. So here's the beginning bobble and how you do it. So we're just going to immediately chain up three. One, two, and three. This is identical to what you did in video number one and we are just going to double crochet and we're not going to finish the double crochet. We're going to pull through. You'll have three on your hook. Pull through two and hold. So wrap going in. Pull through. Pull through two and hold and you will have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all of them. And uh, just like before we want to chain two, one and two. You could do a whole afghan using this whole square as well so don't be afraid to do that. We want to do a regular bobble now. So a regular is just wrapping. We're going to double crochet, pull through, pull through two and hold and we want to collect these loops on there so that we have a total of four loops in the end. So just like that. So wrap and then through, pull through two and hold and you have a total of four now. So yarn over, pull through all four and then chain two, one and two. And so what we need to do is we end up, we have to have eight groups of these bobbles going all the way around. So we just want to continue to go around the ring uh, making more bobbles just like you see here so that you have a total of eight of them at the end. So continue to do that. We'll meet back up when you have a total of eight going around the center ring. 
and make sure that you, you chain two in between each of the bobbles. So I'm finishing up my final bobble just like so, so that you will be able to count. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then make sure you do your chain two, and then you join it to the very top of the beginning bobble, just right there. So right beginning. And I want to fasten off this color, so I'm going to take my scissors and snip, and I want to just pull up and just weave in the ends. And the next round is going to trap these weaved ends into position, so I'm not worried about it too much falling out. And you kind of want to keep a track of your tails throughout your project in order to make it work for yourself in order to speed up your time when you're going to finish this off the end. And this beginning one that we had, we can just safely trim that now because we trapped it under enough stitches. And voila, you can move along. So I'm going to move on along to blue to start off round number two for this project. To start off round number two, I want to just create a slip knot. And this is just my own personal preference. You can fasten it on whichever way that you most prefer. And then I just want to come in between a bobble. So there you see that there's groups of three together. You just want to come anywhere. It doesn't matter which one. Grab the yarn and pull it through. And we are going to do a beginning bobble. So I'm just going to grab the straggler and the yarn and I'm just going to pull it through once. And then I'm just going to grab the regular yarn two and then three. So there is the beginning. So the first part is really trapped in there really good. And so I'm just going to do two more double crochets as the beginning bobble. So wrap and through and hold and then wrap through, pull through two and hold. And so now you have three on your hook, yarn over, grab it and pull through all three and now chain two and then into the same space right underneath you want to do a regular bobble just like you were doing in the last round. So just continue just to continue to gather your loops up. You don't finish off your double crochet. You just leave the last loop on and then once you get four pull through all and then chain two. So let's begin the next one. So in between the next space there we want to do a regular bobble. Okay, once you get your four on there, yarn over and pull through, chain two, and in the same space, put in another bobble. So every one of the spaces are going to have two bobbles in between, and you will have a chain two that separates the bobbles at the top, just like so. So let's review one more time. So one and two, so that's your chaining of two. Come into the next space and put two more bobbles in with a chain two that separates them in between. and chain two and coming back into there to finalize that off and continue to do that all the way around. We're going to meet back up. We're going to finalize this color off and bring on the pink for the final two revolutions of this project. So now coming all the way back around and you can tell that I'm done because when you look at it you can see it's almost like spokes and there should be eight spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and then there's two bobbles into each one of those and when you find get the final bobble done don't forget to chain two and then just join it to the beginning of the first bobble you started off with with the slip stitch just like so. And I want you to fasten off this color and we're going to bring on pink for the final two revolutions for round number three and four for this particular square. And again the color choices are up to you. You don't have to change colors. You can just do whatever you feel is most appropriately to you. So I'm just weaving these in uh, gently because the next round just like the the yellow here I was able to get those in so that it looks really quite decent when you're finished with it. So let's uh, begin and we're just going to do a slip knot just like so and on the work here we want to pull it up and when we look at it we just want to follow the spoke up. So just here's the yellow. Just follow it up in between. Do not go in between where you see two are joining like this. Okay so you just want to go right in between and we want to fasten everything together. If you have your own fastening method you're more than welcome to do so and just bring everything together and I want to do a simple chaining of three to begin. So let's do that. So one, two and three and do two double crochets in to the same space just like you see there. And so the very next one now is two double crochets into the next chain two space. So here's the next two right here. Two double crochets in and then it's calling for three double crochets in the next chain two space. So 
jump to the next one and we're going to do three double crochets into there. And this is the very center of your square side. And then the very next one is two double crochets in. One and two. And now we immediately are going to start a first corner. And the first corner is three double crochets, chain two, and then three double crochets. So in the next space, we're going to do three double crochets. Okay, chain two, one and two. We're turning a corner and going into the same spot for another three double crochets in. And so basically we just need to follow the same pr uh, parameters that we did over here. So two, three, and two. Do you see that? Three, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets. So the first one is going to be two double crochets in a row. That's the first uh, gap space. Here is the middle of the next corner of the next side. So it's three double crochets. If you can see consistency like this, this would just make your job a lot easier. The next one is going to get two double crochets. And then finally we're on the final corner or the next corner. So again it's the three two three. So three double crochets. Chain two. And then three double crochet. So let's review again one more time and then I'm going to leave the last line for you. So again remember we had two, three, and two and then we had two, three, and two. So guess what so that means. So the first gap is going to get two double crochets. The next gap is going to get three double crochets which is the very center of your next side. And so the next one is two double crochets and we're now ready for a corner. So again, three, two, three. So three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and then finalize off this round doing exactly what I've already shown you before. So to finalize off this round, we've gone across the side. So three, two, and three. And then the final one is the other side of the corner. So it's three double crochet in because we started off on the half of the first corner. And then we chain two, one and two. And then we just slip stitch to the beginning of the chain three that we started off with and that will finalize round number three. And we do not want to fasten off this color. We want to keep this color going for one more revolution as we finalize off this motif together. To begin the final revolution just like I showed you on video number one, I'm going to slam in my hook into the hole and I'm going to pull it through and through. And again this just kind of backwards up your work so that you're going one stitch backwards and behind and this just helps you. So if you remember on the video number one we ended up with 13 uh, stitches going across before we did the outside and on this one here we got 13 as well because we're simply going to be putting these work together. So every stitch now going around is going to be a single crochet just like you did on the very final revolution of your octagon motif. So we're just going to simply just do one single crochet into each and then in the corners it's just like we did before one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and this is just acting like it was on the motif as you go all the way around. So every stitch is one single crochet and then we just now hit the corner. So one single crochet, chain one and one single crochet as you work all the way around. So continue to do that. One single crochet all the way around, corners one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and we'll meet back up and we'll finalize off this motif. Together. So we're now coming back all the way around and we are just doing the single crochet and then on the final corner it's one single crochet, chain one and then we just want to slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet that you started off with and just weave in our ends. And when we weave in our ends we're just going to be gentle about it because when we go to sew in these together with the other motifs you will find that that will get trapped in between the sewing stitches. So it's not something you have to worry about 
too dramatically. So if you've done your homework right and you've done your uh, tension right, um, you will notice that these will fit together right in the corner slots of your particular afghan. So here we have the the round or the octagon shape here and you will see that this just fits right into position no matter where it is around the edge. So let's begin to move on to video number three as we finalize and put this afghan together. So there you have it. That was how to complete your squares. If you want to learn how to put everything together now and you want some fabulous little tips, please go on to video number three as we start assembling all of our octagons and squares together to finalize this throw. Until next time, I'm Mikey from RedHeart.com as well as The Crochet Crowd. And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as The Crochet Crowd. I'm Mikey here from The Crochet Crowd and today is video number three where we're assembling your entire afghan together. We're putting all the components of the squares and the octagons together and I'm going to show you tips on how I did it. And of course, you, if you have your own methods that you most prefer, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So join me today as we put everything together. If you missed the other two videos for this, this is the octagon and the squares throw and you will see two other videos that you can see on how to make this particular throw right from start to finish. So you're on step number three. You will have needed 20 of these octagon shapes. If you're following the color scheme inside the red heart pattern, you will need 10 octagon shapes that are identical color and then 10 of another, just like so. But that doesn't mean you have to follow that pattern 100%. You can mix and match the colors any kind of, any style that you really wanted to. So you just need 20 of those. Then you will have finished these little squares. And again, if you're following the pattern, you will have only needed six of the one kind of color and then six of another. Again, if you're mixing, matching your colors, you just need a total of 12. So these are now gonna work in combination to each other in order to attach them together. So when we look down here on the table, what I decided to do is that I'm gonna be attaching the squares to the points of the octagon on all sides, just like so. And I'm gonna come back afterward and I'm gonna sew these together. Together. So I'm just going to go all the way around in one circle in order to just attach these together. Now when you're doing this, when I'm going to attach the next one, I'm simply just going to put another square in, just like so, and I'm going to look at the color scheme and see what's going on with it. And then when I go to sew this one in now, I'm going to go all the way around just like so. So we just want to continue to build and build on top of this afghan. But in this tutorial today, I'm going to show you how I sew this because you cannot see where I stopped and I started because I'm that fabulous. But when you turn it over as well, look how amazing that looks. Just like so. So it is sewn. Some people prefer to crochet, but this is just an idea. So if you have a preferred method of attaching, I welcome you to do that. So now let's get started on showing you how to attach your squares and your octagons together. So to begin, I'm going to use the same color of string that is on the outside of the motif, just like so. In this case, it is blue. And on the one side of it, I put in a slip knot, just like you would as if you were going to start to crochet. And then I just have it going through my darning needle, just like this. So now I'm going to look. It doesn't matter which one I start off with, as long as I start off in a corner. And I'm just going to start off with the one. And I'm going to go right into the corner section of the motif here and I'm gonna go right into the corner of the motif of the square. And I'm gonna make sure that I grab both of the stitches, so both on the top. Okay, so it's just gonna be matching the stitches together. Now you will have noticed that when they were on top here, you won't think that they go well together, but they actually stretch together. And a lot of people, when they go to make these kind of afghans, they make it to the point where um, when you put things together that it kind of buckles up or kind of puckers up and that's because they didn't allow for the stretch. So I just kind of went around, just like that. And so what I want to do now is that I have in my, uh, my straggler, just like so. So I'm just gonna work my way along the edge, grabbing the stitches. There should be the same amount of stitches on here as there is on one side of the octagon and vice versa going all the way around. So even though you can't see it, see how it stretches? You can see that that makes a lot of sense when you do that. So this is the straggler. I want to keep it on the top. So I'm just going to use the string. And every time I go and I just move along. So I'm just matching stitch to stitch on both sides of the motifs. 
and I'm using the straggler, keeping the straggler on top because as I'm doing that, this top section is trapping that straggler underneath, so therefore you will never see it because you don't want to give an afghan away if you got stragglers. So I'm just continuing to work my way across. I actually really like this process. I know that some crocheters really dread the process of putting things together. But you know, I figured myself, you know, this is, you've already spent most of your time making the afghans. This process, I find it very therapeutic and just really kind of just relaxing and uh, it doesn't really take that long. It's not as fast as crochet. <laughs> but uh, you know, you've already done the hard work. So as you can see, you're kind of just going along and just putting things together. And I'm gonna continue and I'm just gonna meet you up at the next corner where I'm gonna show you what to do there. So I'm coming up to the next corner. And for example, say you're running out of stitches on one side or another, this is where you can fake it. And this is where you allow crocheters um, creativity really is if, it, if you end up with an extra stitch which I don't in this particular uh, case here but if you did you just have to just make sure you sew it so it looks like it's even and uh, therefore you don't have to redo another uh, motif if you don't have to so I'm right in the corner of the uh, octagon I'm right in now the corner of the square and now I'm just immediately going to jump to the next motif so I'm just going to just simply turn my work I don't have to turn these ones here I just did that for a visual but uh, I'm going to go into the corner of the next motif and go into the exact same corner where you finish that last one off so that it really does a nice tight butt join there to bring it together. And again, just like we worked along this side, we're going to do the same on this side, just working our way all the way around, just like so. So continue that, and I'll meet you up in a second where we'll add another one. And eventually we're going to finish off and I'm going to show you how to hide in your yarn string at the end so that you don't have any stragglers hanging out of your work. So we're just finishing off the next corner just like so. So you can see how it's kind of pulling things together. So it wasn't that close before. It's now time for this one here. And I now want to go into the corner of this octagon. And I want to go into the same corner where we just pulled that other one out of to tighten that on and again work my way across. Now one thing I didn't mention when I first started is that you will notice that the uh, motifs have a good side and a bad side and uh, for example they look slightly different so this is the other side of that and just like that. So you want to make sure that when you're putting things down that you actually can see that difference and uh, hopefully that makes sense for you as well to be able to, to identify that as well. So as you're working along, any kind of loose ends that you left in on the edges of these motifs, this sewing aspect is going to trap everything into position uh, permanently as well. So that's why we didn't have you worry about too much of the, of the stragglers when we had you just uh, weaving them in and out when you were making these motifs as you went along. So you're now in the next corner and I'm going to corner to corner in here. Okay, and then the next one is the brown, and I'm going to go into the corner of the brown. You notice I didn't look in which corner I should just grab. It's, a, it's an octagon, so it doesn't really matter. It should, have all be, it should all be the same anyway. And just, again, going stitch to stitch all the way down. You will notice that your uh, string will also start to unravel a little bit. It uh, kind of untwists. I think people may know a good reason for why that happens. I'm really not sure myself. Um, it doesn't really bother me too much, but uh, depending on how long, long your string is, uh, that could be a real nuisance uh, if that's happening to you. So I'm now just finishing up. I've gone almost all the way around so far, and I just got a, just a couple more stitches to go. I'm making sure I go corner to corner and make sure that you come into the same corner that you attached as well uh, when you started to also create the nice fine butt that you had on the other ones as well. And then once you've done that is that you just have to secure this into position. So I'm just going to slide my needle underneath and I'm just going to come back and force it to kind of like tie up, up over top of itself just like that. So just I just want it to kind of tie onto itself and then once I've done that is that I'm just going to take my needle and just glide it in between the stitches not underneath the work but just in between the stitches 
Sometimes your angle is better. So I'm just going to in between the stitches that I just created. Just like that. And I'm just going to pull this out through. And I'm just going to tug on it, tighten it up. Like that. Trim. And then any kind of stragglers that you may have run over to fasten in position as you've gone all the way around, you can fasten those off as well. And just trim those. And voila, you've just created your join just like that. So now I'm ready to do this little mini section here. Again, a new piece of string, a slip knot on the other side. And I'm just going to start off in the corner where this is already starting off and go to corner to corner like this. And I want to pull it through the slip knot like that to tighten it on top. Here's the straggler just like we had before. And again, we just want to work our way across, trapping that straggler on top of the of the stitches and that will be putting that in permanently and you can see that the sewing effect does a really nice tight uh, really effective um, no-brainer kind of join as well so you don't really see a lot of uh, of you know people are going to have a hard time telling exactly where you did everything which is kind of the whole point so you're just matching stitches to stitches again, going in these little sections. So you can do all your little uh, squares uh, up front if you wanted to, and then come back and do all these little mini sections, or you can do it as you go. Again, the creativity is up to you, and you can decide what works for you as well. And once you get to the other side of the line, just like so, just match corner to corner, and then you just kind of want to tie it into a, a knot just to kind of fasten it onto itself. Worst thing you can have is one of these falling apart on you. Just tying a knot. And then again, just like we had before, I want to just come back and just slip it through a few stitches. Tug on it and then give it a good trim. And you can see that that is done pretty good and that would be the other side done as well. Oh, there's a striker on this side, no big deal. You just turn it and you're good to go. So there you have it. You have assembled your Afghan and good luck. And we love to see your creativity. So be sure to post photos on redheart.com's Facebook as well as the Crochet Crowd's Facebook. Until next time, join me next time as we have some more fabulous tutorials lined up just for you. Until next time, I'm your host Mikey here from redheart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd.